You know, friends, every choice we make is an opportunity to stand for freedom, even something as simple as your cell phone service. Here's the truth. Most cell phone providers don't care about you or what you care about. They just want your money. Patriot Mobile is different. For over 12 years, they've stood with Americans who believe in faith, family, and freedom. Yeah, it's a little different, right? It's good to know that. Contributing millions of dollars to Christian conservative causes. The best part is with Patriot Mobile, you don't have to sacrifice quality or service. Patriot Mobile offers premium access to all three major U.S. networks, so you'll never have to worry about coverage. Think switching is complicated? Well, it's not. You can keep your number and keep your phone, or you know what? You can upgrade both. Patriot Mobile's 100% U.S.-based team will get you activated in minutes. If you're stuck in a contract or still owe money on your phone, guess what? No problem. They even have a contract buyout program. So what are you waiting for? Go to patriotmobile.com slash rav or call 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. Use promo, promo code rav for a free month of service. Switch today. That's patriotmobile.com slash rav or call that number, folks, 972-PATRIOT. All righty, our next guest is a Harvard University professor of science. He's the director of the Institute for Theory and Computation at the Center for Astrophysics and the author of Interstellar, The Search for Extraterrestrial Life and Our Future in the Stars. I'm happy to welcome back Professor Avi Lowe. Professor, you were on this show not long ago talking about the strange object hurling towards Earth, the three-eye atlas making its closest approach to Earth today. Now, we said we're going to bring you back on this day. It's going to pass by Earth at the, at the closest it's ever been. What do we know? And did it change paths? And where is it headed? Well, uh, thank you for having me. This is really the acid test for this object called 3i Atlas. It's the third interstellar object that the astronomers spotted the, in the skies coming from outside the solar system. And this object was unusual. It's a very big, comparable to the size of Manhattan Island. And also its a path lies in the plane of the planets around the sun. And, you know, that uh, might uh, indicate some intelligent planning uh, at any event. The point where it comes closest to the sun is an opportunity for a spacecraft to, to take a maneuver uh, and uh, taking advantage of uh, the uh, gravitational assist from the sun. And, and that's why today is a very special day. Uh, we can't look at it because it's hiding behind the sun, which could again have been a, a signature of uh, planning. Uh, but uh, we will know in the coming month whether it changed course or maybe released some mini probes. That would indicate without a doubt that it's uh, technological. However, it might uh, most likely be natural, in which case uh, there could be some fireworks because it's exposed to an immense amount of heat from the sun right now at closest approach. So that can break it apart if it's uh, glued together by ice. And uh, uh, in that case, we might see that it fragments and uh, we would see a beautiful uh, uh, cometary tail uh, stretched behind it. And uh, these are the two possible outcomes. And uh, we just need to watch and see what happens. Uh, it's really important because uh, if it's a black swan event, a, a very small probability event of it being alien technology, it would have a huge implications for humanity. However, even if it's uh, just natural, we will learn something new about the, the backyards of other stars. Professor Love, so many questions, but I'm fascinated with this. Is, this is wild. So you're suggesting that it's one of two, could be one of two things. It could, might actually be um, an intelligent life form somewhere else sending this probe through the solar system, through, through the galaxy uh, with with a path that may be remotely controlled, we don't have any way of knowing if there's any sort of electronics or any sort of signal marker that would tell us if it's being controlled? No, we don't. Uh, I suggested actually uh, monitoring it with radio observatories because it so happens that it came from the same direction as the WOW signal that was detected back in 1977, a mysterious radio signal uh, from a source approaching us and 
we didn't know where it's coming from. And now it looks as if, you know, with a probability of 0.6%, it comes from within nine degrees of the direction of arrival of 3i Atlas, this new object. So I suggested checking whether it has any radio transmission. And I was uh, um, actually, um, I was told today that uh, uh, they are monitoring it in the radio. So it would be interesting to see if they detect anything. Uh, other than that, um, if it maneuvers, obviously it's technological because uh, we don't expect a rock to do that. Uh, another signature of technology would be, obviously, if we had a high resolution image of it, and NASA took uh, the highest resolution image on October 2nd, when this object came close to Mars. Uh, it used the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and unfortunately, they haven't released the data because of the government shutdown. And I mm. corresponded today with uh, Representative Anna Paulina Luna, who uh, very graciously offered the help in trying to convince NASA to release the data so we can analyze it. And um, that the image or several images that were taken by HiRISE uh, should allow us to see the object with a pixel resolution of 30 kilometers, the best uh, that we had uh, obtained so far. So a uh, little tight answer, if you don't mind, because I have another question. So, so we, we don't have any way of bouncing radio uh, waves off of this object to find out how it comes back and to decide the density of it, or maybe even what it's actually made of? No, it's too far from the Earth. It's avoiding the Earth. It's on the other side of the sun relative to Earth right now. Uh, that's a very interesting question, actually. Um, I haven't done the calculation. I should check it. That, that's an excellent insight because we do see, uh, you know, uh, the, the trace, uh, just like in a radar system, if there is a big enough object or it comes close to Earth, you can actually trace it in uh, the same approach that radars are, are using, where you shine a radio mm -hmm. beam on it and, and detect the reflection of it. Um, but the, in this case, it doesn't come very close to Earth. However, it's quite big. Uh, it's comparable to Manhattan Island in its size. So I need to do the calculation. How easy it is to detect the reflected radio waves? That's a nice uh, insight that you just suggested. Well, well, thank you. Now, I'm not an astrophysicist, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn last night. Um, sir, on a scale of 1 to 100, um, you're the guy who would know it. Is there alien life out there? Oh, definitely. I think it's... Uh, it's very arrogant of us to imagine that we are, you know, the most intelligent species, that we are at the top of the food chain in the Milky Way galaxy. Um, there are two ways by which we will, we might be proven wrong. Uh, one is the uh, technologies that we develop, the uh, artificial intelligence, AI, uh, uh, could uh, uh, reach uh, cognitive levels that are beyond us. Uh, and that will bring a sense of modesty to us, uh, to our existence, because we wouldn't be as smart as the AI systems, our, our technological kids. Another possibility is that there would be alien intelligence that we will find that is uh, represents uh, a, a smarter kid on our cosmic block. Uh, and that is also AI, a, a alien intelligence. So. Um, the question AI, is, the, which will, the other AI, AI, the other AI, alien other intelligence. AI. That's, a, that's another, that's a whole nother ball of uh, a yarn to spin, so to speak. So I got to go. I have a hard out, but I want to appreciate you and thank you. And we want to have you back because every time we talk to you, uh, we our chats get lit up because we want to hear more about it. And congratulations, folks. If you want to see more of this, Joe Rogan had uh, Professor Loeb on, I believe, yesterday. So about, is that right? Exactly right. Um, yeah. And uh, all right. Good. Uh, good to yeah, have you on. Good. And, and by the way, if you do discover alien life, you got to come back on bowling to let us know first. All right? I will definitely maybe Rogan over. first, and then you can talk to us second. Yeah, you have answer. great insights uh, already. You gave me something to check right now. Thank you. Well, let, let us know if there's any any anything you found out from that. Appreciate you, sir, uh, Professor you. Avi Loeb. Thank you. All right, folks. Two and a half minutes. We'll be right back. Nice bump. Nice bump.